Okay, this video is part of a series. Be sure to check out the previous videos. Before you continue on this one, there should be a link in the description or at the end of this video. And uh, we're using Netcat, uh, BusyBox Netcat in this case, to create a web server. This is not something you want to do in most cases. You want to use a real web server when possible, but in a pinch, or if you're just having fun or learning how stuff works, this is great. So we're going to learn a little bit about embedding images today. Because uh, in the previous videos, we show, we, I showed you how to pass strings of text uh, and then also files and command outputs to a web browser, to a client, uh, using uh, NCAT, Netcat. And um, today we're going to look at putting images on those pages. As we talked in the previous video, I, I linked to stuff outside. So let me uh, let me quickly here go go like this. Let me remove this that's from a previous tutorial. And over here, I'm going to go Tux Linux, and I'm going to go images, and I'm going to pick an image like. I don't know, just any one. This, this one looks good. And I'm just going to say copy, copy image, image address. We can now close that. And up here, I can say vim, and I can create a file, and I can put some HTML in here. So I'll say image source, and I'll put in the link to that image. I'll save it. And then what I can do is I can use the uh, command that we used in a previous video uh, right here, which I'm not going to go over all this again. This first part's just saying, hey, I'm a web server, I'm an HTTP server, and then we're going to pass it that file to our, our BusyBox NC. And now if I refresh this, ah, ha, ha, I forgot one part. We need to have that. Uh, uh, doc type at the beginning of the file. So we can either put it in the file, which is where it really belongs, or we can put it in our command here. Let me go ahead and just go vim index and here add that doc type. Otherwise, the web browser thinks I'm just passing in a text file and it's going to display that text. But now, I believe if I did everything right, there we go. We get the image on the screen because the web browser goes, goes, oh, doc type, this is an HTML file. Read this as HTML. Display that image, which it did. Great. Well, if I list out in here, you can see I have four images in here, tux1, tux2, tux3, tux4, png. And if I was to go back into our file here, and I was to uh, delete all this, oops, I can say tux2.png save that, run the same command again, and when I refresh my web browser down here, uh-oh, I get a broken image. Why is that? Well, because on a real web server, your client, your web browser goes, okay, hi, I'd like to see this HTML, and the HTML has a link to another file on it. Then the web browser again goes to the server and goes, hello, I'd like this image file now. Problem with this is, after passing it this file, our web server turned off. It goes, oh, I set the file, I'm done. And even if we put it in a while loop, BusyBox here doesn't know how to access any files other than what's passed to it. So it doesn't know how to access that, that image file unless we tell it to. So how can we display that image inside our HTML file? Well, there's a few options. So, uh, and uh, let's go ahead and the first option is to make a static page that has the images embedded. Well, how do you embed an image into an HTML page? Well, it's simple. You, you use Base64, which I've talked about in previous videos. Base64 can take any file, uh, any binary file, so an image, video, program, blah, 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 and turn it into a string of plain text. And in most cases, for media anyway, uh, video, audio, and images, uh, web browsers can decode that. So all we have to do is pick one of our images. So we'll say, in this case, we're working with Tux2. I can say base64, and most likely this is installed on your system, and it's built into BusyBox as well. So even if you're on a lightweight modem or a router or some other lightweight uh, device, uh, you can get BusyBox on there, or it's most likely already on there, and you can pass it this, uh, this command. So for base64, I'm going to say tux2.png, and it's going to give us all this text. 
And that is the image in base64 format. It's very long because it's, it's the entire image. In fact, I can't even scroll all the way back to the top. It's so long. But what I can do is if you, uh, you can put it in your clipboard or pipe it into a file. Uh, I usually do pipe it into my clipboard here. I use xclip uh, and that puts it in my clipboard and then I can go into my HTML file here and I can delete that and I can paste in all of that and save that. Run the same command we ran before and if I did everything properly, oh wait, no I didn't. I already know I didn't. Uh, uh, so I'm saying source and I'm giving that base64. We have to tell it that it's it's base64 image. So here I'm going to add in this text. Whoops. Uh, I'm saying data colon. It's an image PNG file and it's base64 with a comma here. Again, I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous videos. Everything I'm doing is in the links in a note in the notes in the links in the description. So go to the description of this video and all these notes are on on pastebin so you can uh, see this. Um, so we're saying that we're, we want to look at an image, but instead of looking at a separate file, we're just embedding base64 into here. Save that, start our server up, and if I did everything right, I refresh, there is our image uh, because it's embedded in that HTML file. Now, if you don't have Xclip installed, I, I recommend installing it, it's a very useful tool. You could also do something like this. I can just uh, remove my index HTML file. I can do base64, and instead of piping it into Xclip, I can just put it into index.html, and then I can open up index.html, and then up here I can add in uh, all the stuff I need to add in. I can add in my uh, doc type, and I can say that this is a base64 image, and then I can jump all the way to the bottom and add in my closing tag. And if we did all that properly, I can run the server again, refresh this. Oh, it didn't work. I probably just put an extra space or something somewhere it doesn't belong. Let's go ahead and look at our, our file again. Oh, I forgot to <laughs> close my quotations here. We now refresh. Nope, still not working. We can always look at the, the code here. Image source. Uh, ah, <laughs> uh, that would be because I started with single quotes and closed with end quo uh, double quotes. There we go. You could tell because the colors weren't quite right there. So let's go ahead and close this. Run our server again. And there's our image. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. It works, but it's a pain in the butt. Plus, what if the images on your server change? I have four images. Do I want to do that four times? And what if I add a new image or remove an image? Well, we can go back to what we learned in a previous video and actually run shell commands and pipe the output to BusyBox, NCAT, NetCat, whatever. So this is the command I'm going to be using. So what I'm doing here is I'm echoing out, again, our HTTP header. Then I'm echoing out because I'm not using a file anymore. I'm not going to be using that index file. I'm saying echo out. This is a doc type. This is a HTML file. And then I'm running a command. And again, as I said in a previous video, no matter what program you're using, because I'm using bash here, you could actually write all this in Python or C or C++ or Perl, anything that can output text, any program that can output text, you can use this. Uh, so you can actually make a C program, compile it, and run it the same way, um, but it's just easier to use scripts in cases like this. So anyway, for me anyway. Again, this is a web server, this file is an HTML file, and then we're issuing a command here, and it's a for loop. We're saying for each PNG file, we're creating a variable called i, and this is basic shell commands. So I mean, hopefully you, you, you know how shell commands work. Uh, we're gonna do, and we're gonna echo out, our image source, a little confusing because it's on two lines here, uh, and then we're going to pass it the header for the, uh, the base64, and then we're going to say for each file, paste in the base64 command. So this, this dollar sign uh, parentheses is saying run this command, we're saying base64 against the current file. Done. And it's going to loop through each file, 
it's going to output all. So let me show you this without uh, the busybox command, without the ncat command. There we go. It just outputted all that HTML, which again, it's so long I can't even scroll up to the top. But that's what it outputted. Outputted? That's the output of it. And again, we're going to put that in curly braces so that we can pipe all of that into our busy box and see, listen on port 8000. And now if I refresh this, boop. And if I was to remove one of those tux files, so let's say remove tux, oops, tux uh, number two.png, and I start my server back up and refresh this, you got that. Now again, if I refresh now, we've got nothing because our server is set to only run once and then disconnect. So if you want your server, and I should have mentioned this in a previous video, I quickly stated it, but I didn't show you. If you want this to keep running, you're gonna have to put it in a while loop. So we'll say while one do, and then we're gonna say done. Now I can refresh and refresh and refresh and refresh, and the server keeps, you know, basically, we connect to the server, the server gives us the output, the server turns off, and then the server starts up again. That's kind of how it's working. Again, use a real web server when you can. But that that works, that's how, how you can do this. Now, that's images. You can do the same thing with audio files. So let me go ahead and show you this. I'm gonna copy this command. Now I have two AUG files, uh, which are sound files. Uh, on my server here. So let me go ahead and hit enter and we'll refresh this. And you can see I can play this sound file and I can play this sound file. Okay, so let's look at that command again. It's basically the same. Again, we're saying this is an HTTP server. This is a HTML document. And then instead of looping through all PNGs, I'm looping through all the AUG files. And instead of saying this is an image, I say it's audio with controls. And the source is, in this case, it's data again. But instead of saying, uh, what is it, image uh, PNG, we're saying this is an audio AUG file in base64 format, and then we're gonna pass it the base64 for each file. Again, all these notes are in the link in the description, and we're passing that the busy box on port 8000. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and again, I can run that, and it loads them up. And uh, again, you can make a static HTML file with this embedded, but why make it static when you can actually have scripts running? And again, I can do this, I can say while one, don't forget your spaces there, or it won't work, do this, and I should be able to, you know, load this up. I can open up another tab and load it up. So it can serve up to, to, you know. Now, I mean, the server starts up, serves that information, quickly disconnects and reconnects. Theoretically, if someone was trying to connect while it's turned off, which is like a fraction of a second, they'll get a, a, a server error. But again, don't use this as a web server <laughs> in real life scenarios unless you really you know have to. Um, but that's pretty much it. Now I'm not going to show you, but you can do the same thing with video files. Um, you know they might load a little slow because if it's a video file, unlike normally with HTML, you load the HTML file and then it asks for the video file piece by piece. It loads. It can stream it while it's playing. Um, this is going to be basically embedded into the web page, so the page won't finish loading until it loads all that video information. So you can do it, but again, just like everything we're doing in this series, probably shouldn't in most cases. But I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. Also visit my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Uh, there you can support my videos, and I do appreciate that, even if it's a little bit, a little, little bit. And you can also go on my website, click on the support link, and that will bring you to a place where you can also uh, support through PayPal. Uh, I do thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.